Well, last week I gave a quick teaser introduction to this topic of using Accelerate to read the quadrature inputs from a high-speed motor, driving a cool little tack demo, and this is what we got to see. But before I showed you the video, I did say we would come back around and talk in detail about what's really going on here, and that's exactly what this video is for. Let's get started by looking at the setup. First and foremost, of course, we have our Accelerate board sitting there. Next to that is a standard Arduino Uno. From a power perspective, we tried to be pretty careful, so we are powering the servos with its own power supply from this battery pack, and this goes to both of the servos. We've got a separate battery pack here just for the Accelerate and Uno board power. And the way we're doing that is running that into the barrel jack on the Accelerate and then just jumpering from VN on Accelerate over to the Uno. Now, if we take a look over to the right-hand side here, we do have an Adafruit motor shield. That's actually stacked on top of another Accelerate board that's running the sketch that will allow us to control the motor. And the way we're controlling the motor is through this DF Robot wheel. And this is something that I showed when I did the simple quadrature demonstration a couple of weeks ago. It has its own small quadrature on there. And so instead of using a potentiometer, I just decided to use this wheel and control it using the quadrature and reading that quadrature on the accelerate board that's paired with the motor shield. And that's coming over and it is driving and controlling the speed of this DC motor. And this is a pretty beefy DC motor. It can run up to 5,000 RPM. And we have a, a really nice high precision quadrature encoder that's sitting on here. And this quadrature will support up to 2,048 ticks per revolution. So uh, when you get going at 5,000 RPM with 2,048 ticks per revolution, that is a lot of ticks coming by and a lot of things you need to be keeping track of if you want to be staying precise and accurate with your measurement. So we're feeding from that quadrature to this little breadboard and then just jumpering those outputs to the Arduino Uno and to accelerate to pins two and three, which is where we're reading our quadratures. And then, of course, we are going to control the servos from each of them. So out of pin 12, we've got the left-hand side and the Uno controlling that servo and the right-hand side, the Accelerate, controlling the other one. So that is our setup. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how things work once we start powering up the motor. Okay, so I'm going to be using this simple wheel as we talked about to control it. That's got a little quadrature down there. Down below, you can see that I have a little RPM gauge. That is a screenshot or capture video from the serial monitor coming from the Accelerate board. We have actually have the USB hooked up and we might as well go ahead and add a nifty looking tachometer graphic right here. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is show you a short clip of running the motor all the way up to speed and then back down without any talking about what's going on. I want you to be able to hear the motor running in the background and hear the servos moving. The motor is sort of distracting, so I wanna be able to talk over about what's going on without that in the background. Let's have a quick look at what takes place when we do this. Okay, let's take a look at this again without the background noise and taking a little more time to actually observe what's going on. So as we start turning the RPMs up and getting the motor up to speed, you'll notice that actually the Uno and the Accelerate are tracking at about the same pace as it's sort of approaching 1,000. Here we're at 1,200 right now. And as you go higher, you're going to start to see some wobble start to show up on the servo over on the Uno side. Now, take a look at what happens here as we get right about 3,000. You're going to see, first of all, that there's the wobble is starting to get more pronounced, and it's sitting there jiggling around pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to turn this up a little bit, and now there's an interesting inflection point right there, right about 3,700. I'm going to back up a little bit, and we're back up, and then when I cross over that 3,700 RPM, you'll see where the pointer on the Uno side just kind of actually drops in the wrong direction. We've got the jitter going on and then it actually starts moving the other way. And this is something that's gonna get even more pronounced as we go up higher in speed. So obviously this is a huge problem if you're trying to read high-speed quadratures and you're trying to accurately measure or keep a pr precise um, reading of what you're doing and you start moving in the wrong direction, that's a big problem. 
So let's go ahead and start inching this up closer to 4,000. And we see some wobbling around. And now we're kind of starting to head in the wrong direction again. Right about 4,400 RPM is kind of on the breaking point. And as we turn past that, you'll see that the servo just goes completely in the other direction. And what's going on here is, is actually that, that quadrature reader on the Uno just isn't simply able to get around fast enough in servicing the interrupt routines that it's using to be able to properly you know, add the direction that it needs to add. In fact, what I can do is I can push this to the point where it actually touches those two input pins on the Arduino Uno. Let's go ahead and try that again, and I'll zoom in here and allow you to get a closer look at that. So if I push it up there, you can see there's actually a little bit of a bend taking place on that straw that uh, fortunately these are pretty high tech servos, pretty high power servos, I'm not too worried about straining them too much, but I wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that. Now we'll bring the RPMs back down and we will start to see this come back in line with where it's supposed to be. Now, as we turn down past that sort of 4,700 magic number, it kind of goes back up to where it should be, but it's still not reading the right value. And so it's still having a difficult time keeping up even at these RPMs. It hasn't flipped over and gone completely the wrong direction anymore, but it's not to where it should be. And as we approach 4,000, we're getting a little bit closer, should start to see the uh, accelerate side start to come down. And we'll see that just reduce and reduce and reduce. And they're going to catch up to each other pretty soon here as we bring the speed down to a point where they get about where they should be until we bring everything back down to zero. Now, even though it's a pointing in approximately the same, their correct place, you'll notice that the jitter at the, out there is still a problem. And this is something we've talked about quite a bit before when it comes to controlling servos with Arduino. Um, controlling a nice tight pulse width modulation signal out to the servo is problematic. Again, we don't have that problem with Accelerate because we're using our servo control accelerator block. So it's just a nice hardware PWM controlling that. That combined with the hardware that's doing the quadrature interface creates a super clean, very precise, very accurate interface for reading quadrature data and then turning that around and controlling some kind of a servo or other actuator with that information. Now, as we approach zero here, things kind of straighten back out. You'll notice that the straw on the left-hand side is probably moved a little bit off from where it was when we started because it was pushing actually against those pins for a little while. But that is just a quick description of what's going on and a closer look at the changes that are taking place throughout the sort of sweep of those servos across the RPM of the motor. So what in the world is going on here? Why are we seeing this odd behavior with the Arduino when we're not seeing it with Accelerate? Well, as I'm sure you already expect, it has to do with the fact that we are reading this quadrature data on one of our accelerator blocks, which means there's custom hardware dedicated for doing this task sitting in the FPGA, and it just is having no problems at all. But you may be saying, well, why is there issues trying to do it on the microcontroller on the Arduino Uno? And that's what we're going to talk about very briefly. What we've got are essentially two signals coming from that quadrature encoder, an A and a B signal. They're square waves, and they're supposed to be 90 degrees out of phase with each other. We'll take one of the lines, A, and we want to be watching for one of the edges, either rising or falling, and attach that to an interrupt on the microcontroller. So this is kind of what we're keying off. And this is the first thing we do is we watch for this edge to come along. As soon as we can see one, well, now we want to go look at the B signal below it. And by looking at this, the first thing it does is it tells us the direction that the wheel or the quadrature is turning. Let's say it's a wheel in this case for the sake of argument. So when we see this rising edge of A, we go look at the B signal. And if B is low, well, that means it's moving in one direction. For the sake of argument, let's say it's moving clockwise. This allows us to be able to see that direction. Now let's assume for a moment that the wheel is actually turning the other direction, the quadrature is turning the other direction. Now when we see that rising edge on A, we go look at B and it's high, we know that it's turning in the opposite direction. Now this is a simplified way to visualize this. There are some other ways to visualize when you're moving the other direction in terms of the edge you're really keying off from. But for the purposes of illustration, we're keying off the rising edge of A looking at B, and if it's low, we're going one direction. If it's high, we're going the other direction. But of course, we're doing this with an interrupt in a standard Arduino Uno, which means that when we see that rising edge, when we go to do that check, there's actually a little bit of a delay between the rising edge, recognizing the interrupt, and going out and grabbing that data. And now there are things you can do to optimize how you recognize the interrupt and how you grab that information. And the way that we implemented it for this video, we tried to do the most optimized implementation of a register capture based off an interrupt as we could. But even with that, there's some delay 
in time before that read happens. Now, in this case, it's okay because we're still reading that low value on B, which means we're actually reading the proper direction that the quadrature is turning, so everything is going to be good. So reading direction is one of the first things that we can do with these quadrature encoders. Now, the other thing we can do is calculate the number of turns that we've made with our wheel by keeping track of how many of these edges that we're seeing. So with each one of these rising edges, we can add a count and or decrement account. It depends on which direction it's turning. But let's assume for a minute we're always turning in the same direction, which we are in the case of this video that we put together. So every time we see a rising edge, we look at the B signal and we know, okay, we've moved in that direction and we add that to our count. And so we can do that every time we see an edge, we know we've moved and we know how many turns there are, how many ticks there are in a given quadrature is just part of the characteristics of a quadrature encoder. And so from that data, we can calculate the number of times that that quadrature has made a full revolution because we know how many ticks there are in one full spin of the quadrature encoder. So that's another piece of information we can get. The other thing we can do is if we are doing these reads in a fixed period of time, we can also calculate our speed or our velocity because we know what that fixed period of time is. We know how many ticks we saw coming in from the quadrature and we know whether we are moving in forward or in backward direction. So we can keep track of that. And so we can figure out how far we went and in what period of time, and we can actually calculate a velocity from that. So there is a lot of information that we can extract from the quadrature. And so this is just a real quick overview of the kind of information we can pull from the quadrature. So let's jump back to the kind of simplistic drawing. So this is what we talked about where we're triggering on the rising edge of A and then we're looking at B with a little bit of delay. And so this is working out pretty well. Well, what if we speed up the motor, which means that the number of ticks coming in start getting closer and closer together. Those rising edges of A are getting tighter and at a higher frequency. But of course we have to keep the read time between the interrupt happening on A and going and checking that B signal the same because that's gonna remain the same on the microcontroller well, now we have this interesting situation where when you look where it's reading, you can see it's kind of right at the edge of where B might transition to a high. In this case, we might read it as a low, in which case we'll see that we're moving in the correct direction. But we're probably not always going to have very specific timing on when this read happens, depending on what that Arduino Uno is doing, which means there's going to be some area of uncertainty where that read could show up. Now, if it shows up to the left of where you're seeing it now, we're going to be in good shape because it's going to see it as low and it's going to record that's moving in the right direction. But if we end up over to the right of that, well, now we're going to be in this transitional phase where all of a sudden it thinks it's gone in the other direction. And that is what you are seeing in the video when you start to see that needle bumping around a little bit, and especially when it slowly starts to pitch backwards and forwards right on the edge of that kind of a metastability area where that, that edge of B is changing right when it's trying to read it. So sometimes it's reading it high, sometimes it's reading it low. So you're getting a little bit of twitching back and forth, and sometimes it might actually go down a little bit and come back up because we're right on the edge and that's a little bit of a danger zone. Well, what happens when it switches all the way to the other direction? Well, I'm sure you can appreciate if this is the problem caused by, you know, compressing those edges together at a higher frequency coming off the quadrature, it of course gets even worse the tighter we make it. So imagine this is our motor and we hit that 4,800 RPM and all of a sudden things start really going in the wrong direction. Well, that's because if we look at the reads and the interrupt trigger and when it goes to read B, again, that time period is the same. The interval between A being detected and going out into read B is the same amount of time, but now it just can't do it fast enough. So when it goes and does that read, it sees a high on B, which it's thinking means, okay, now I'm going the other direction, which is completely wrong because it just hasn't gone the other direction. It's just that the amount of data coming in is coming in so rapidly that it simply cannot keep up. And even within that variability we talked about that might happen, it's almost in all cases in this time probably still going to read that high. And what would be interesting is if we continue to push this, we might actually be able to get that to flip back over we just don't have a motor hooked up that is fast enough to do that, but maybe that's a good exercise to do for later. So that is what's going on when you see that Arduino Uno controlled pointer start to jitter and eventually go the wrong direction and then completely flip over. It has everything to do with just simply not being able to keep up with the timing from seeing the rising edge for that interrupt and going out and reading the B signal to determine which direction it's going. 
another great example of some of the limitations with trying to do this with everything running in a microcontroller. Well, why doesn't it happen with the Accelerate board? What is different about that? Well, if you have been listening to me or to any of the things we've talked about in the past, you know that I will talk ceaselessly about the power of acceleration and offload that you get with the FPGA on our Accelerate board. And what we've been able to do with this Quadrature Accelerator block is completely offload the functionality of reading that input data from the Quadratures into custom logic sitting on the FPGA. And that is a huge benefit because when it's running out there, it is absolutely rock solid. We're not gonna miss an edge and everything will increment and decrement exactly like it should. And the beauty of it is we can instantiate as many Quadrature interfaces as we have pins to put it on this Accelerate board and it would not change the functionality whatsoever because those offload engines, those accelerator blocks are running in parallel at speed with no problems whatsoever. And, and that's just one of the huge benefits that you get by moving this stuff off into an accelerator block. So a few key features for our Quadrature block, it does support up to 1.6 million ticks per Quadrature encoder. It supports up to a 16-bit rate counter. In addition to that, it has 24-bit distance counters, which are signed integers so we can keep track of directionality. And we offer a programmable rate and count interval of 20 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. So that is what we offer as part of this Quadrature block. And you can really see the difference it makes when you hook it up and you're able to just do all that Quadrature processing in hardware, completely offloading it from the microcontroller. And I just wanted to give everybody sort of a visual of one way that this can work. Hope this helps. Please leave comments. Ask us any questions you have. I love interacting with you guys. We love to hear from you. Have a great day and we will be back soon. Thank you.